Så er det ikke bare skal nå så. Ja. Test, 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 test. Was this little? Was this little thing? He's doing a little VR thing. He's going to record a little VR. Oh, okay, VR. cool. Yeah, that's cool. I haven't seen this one. Art from uh, Kodak. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, it's okay. We'll we'll move them up. All right. Right, sounds good. Alrighty, guys. So, we're going to start off with our first workshop. We're going to be doing basically lighting essentials with Jordy Vandefoot. He's going to be going through how to create depth with lighting. You need not to light. If you guys don't know who Jordy Vandefoot is, he's the best. First of all, he's fantastic. He's got a YouTube channel called Crayon.com. <laughs> um, super fantastic stuff. A lot of tutorials, premiere tutorials, lighting tutorials, cinematography stuff. So, if you want to, check him out online as well. But I will let Jordy take it away. Let's get a big round of applause for Jordy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for being here. Thank you, Aperture, for letting me speak here up front. Um, so first of all, I'm going to um, start with the presentation. After that, uh, Anders from NDX will start. So um, <laughs> let's bring all the attention to me. To start with, <laughs> okay. Um, so Ted Olwe al already gave a gave a quick introduction. Um, so we run this YouTube channel where we give all kinds of creative uh, tips and tricks uh, about camera lighting, um, post production as well as Premiere Pro tutorials. And I do that together with my colleague who's currently uh, managing the live stream. Because yes, we are live on our YouTube channel now as well. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> uh, we'll also post this afterwards. So. Uh, if you want to watch a rematch of this, you can do so. Uh, no, and <laughs> Anders didn't want to. He's a little bit shy to stream this. <laughs> um, so yeah, just some screenshots here of what of what, what we do. Um, here was this was a video about a lighting tutorial where we were kind of showing like five lighting setups. So this could be for a music video or something like that. Um, I also used Janik to uh, push him through the ground. So these are also things that we're doing. Um, I let Janik play in sci-fi films as well. He loves to do that, uh, and other things that we do. And I even punch him in the face, uh, which I really love to do, by the way. <laughs> um, so now a little bit about the channel. Um, let's start with the um, workshop here. So creating depth with lighting. It's going to be like a really introduction course or workshop uh, into lighting. And um, what's important about lighting is that you're never going to use, or let's say, not much use light to lit a scene. You're not going to add light because you can't see something. You're going to create lighting to, or you're going to use light to create an atmosphere, to create a certain feeling. And that is what light is about. A very important aspect is creating depth. And here's why. If I would ask you to draw a sphere, or like a round ball with on, on, on a paper and a pencil, how would you draw that? Is that like this? Do you agree with, with me that this is a... Uh, a round ball, or is this rather a round ball? I think we would all choose that this right here is a round ball. And um, why is that? What's the difference between these two? What have we added? Or, or shadow. Yeah, shadow. That's exactly. We've added shadow to that ball. We're going to close. <laughs> so Anyx is trying to steal my show. Yeah, <laughs> I thought it hurt something. <laughs> so we're adding shadow. That is very, very important. And the reason for it is because we're drawing on a flat paper, which is actually 2D. And a lot of people are forgetting this. But when, when we are making a video or a film, that is also 2D. Because, I mean, this projector screen is also flat, just like this paper. 
So we have to create that depth ourselves as well, just like we would do on paper and draw that sphere. And uh, this is not something new. Uh, this is, if we're looking back into the history, we can find um, a lot of inspiration actually from, for example, the 1600. I'm not going to go too deep into art history because I'm not a big uh, know about, about uh, knower about that myself. But um, I do find this painter very interesting when it comes down to lighting, and we can learn a lot of that. And we're going to recreate a certain setup from this as well with these lights later. But first of all, I want to look at um, the scene itself. If we're, kinda, we're going, to, going to take a look at the lady all the way on the right side, that lady is coming a lot to the front because um, the lighting is creating depth. And here's why. We have different uh, layers in this painting, actually. If we're going to take a look at that lady, um, the closest thing to the camera or to the painter at that time uh, is her shadow side. So we're seeing a shadow. And behind her, we again see shadow, which is that bed or that wall or whatever that is. So we have two layers of shadow if there wouldn't be any, any light. So that is just flat. There's, there's, there's nothing there. But if we would add like a layer of light in between, we're kind of breaking that and separating those two shadow sides from each other. And that is, what, or that is how creating depth with lighting works. So it's actually pretty simple. Each time that you have a layer of shadow, you just put a layer of lighting in between. And if we're going to take a look at this painting, you would see that pattern as well. So we first start with that uh, shadow side, which is by the way also called uh, shooting against the shadow side. And we'll go a little bit uh, deeper into that in just a moment. The next layer is a highlight or, or a light layer. Then we again see a shadow layer. And as we are going to move more to the back, we again see to that wall on the other side, again, a highlight or a light layer. And then again comes a shadow layer on that next wall. And then behind that, we have the door to the back, which is again a highlight layer. And it continues like that. You can every time see a shadow layer and a light layer, shadow layer, light layer. And that's like a very simple principle to create more depth and bring the elements, because this is actually, this is a, a, a depthy room, <laughs> if you would say it like that. Um, you can kind of break those elements apart and actually assume that they are now uh, more in that 3D space like we want to. Um, let's see if I'm not missing anything here. Yeah, all right. So let's put this into practice now. Um, can I have a model? Thomas? Thomas? Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna switch the camera over here, I hope it's on. So let's create that. Um, you, uh, you can keep it on. Yeah. yeah. I'm just going to dim some lights here so that we don't have too much spill lighting. I'm just going to use this, the Aperture 120D. Very nice softbox. And just put it on him. Have we got a picture? Nope. Let's see if the camera is working. All right. All right, we have a picture. So a very simple thing here now. We've got a lighting on, um, sorry, I forgot your name again. <laughs> Thomas, sorry. <laughs> so we've got a lighting on Thomas right now. Um, what are the two shadow sites? So uh, let's first put this off. I'm sorry. Let's start from a blank page. So oh, yeah. Or perhaps, yeah. So we kind of have like two shadow sides. We still have a lot of spill lighting, so let's assume that we don't have spill lighting, that it's, that it's in a dark environment. Then we have a shadow side here and a shadow side on the back. So a simple technique is to, we would say like, put your lights here on the back, and that would be indeed a back lighting, and you would put your lighting in between. But you can also put your lighting up front and kind of use that as a separator. So I'm just going to put on the lighting right now. And if Thomas would look at this, siding, at this side here, of the light. What we're currently getting now is highlight sight, shadow sight, shadow sight. So we're making it flat again because we're not putting that light in between. Let, let's get a second. The next is menu and then okay. Does anyone know? <laughs> <laughs> Can 
Hello, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Up or down? Is there a preset button down there? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that Picking. Oh. Oh. Okay, much better. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> What's your name? <laughs> <laughs> All right. And a display button, perhaps. Yeah, yeah perfect. Yeah, this is great. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so um, again, we currently have the light over there. So we have, uh, if Thomas is looking at me, we have a highlight site. We've got a shadow site and again a shadow site. So something is wrong here because we're not putting the light in between the two shadow sites. Very simple. We just have Thomas look at the other side. And now we have the uh, nearest parts of, um, of the scene towards the camera is first Thomas' is, uh, shadow site. Then we've got a highlight sh uh, site, and then we've got again the, back the background, which is a shadow site. So now we're kind of creating these layers, just as in that painting that uh, you would see. You can kind of keep building this in the back, uh, just, like that pa uh, just like that painting. So, you so we could create like another highlight part in the background uh, that is a little bit separated from the uh, shadow. Um, so this is, by the way, called uh, shooting against the shadow side, which is uh, used in, uh, f very much in uh, interviews and setups there, uh, where we'd have like someone talking uh, against someone who's uh, asking the questions. It's very important to know where is that person who's going to ask the question sits, on the left side or the right side of the camera. Um, and that's going to matter a lot, which are lighting, as you can see. Um, so yeah, this is like the very basic principle of creating more depth with lighting. So let's add a little lighting in the back. I'm going to take one of these light storms here from Aperture. And I'm just going to shine them here on the, on the wall. Like that. Again, something very basic. And if Thomas here looks to me, we're kind of looking now at the shadow side. We have a highlight site. We've got a shadow site um, behind his highlight site. <laughs> and <laughs> on his um, shadow site, on that uh, site, for this getting uh, hard, um, we, get a we get a highlight again. So again, we're creating these layers, uh, which is important. Uh, if we would put that lighting also on his right site, it would be again a little bit more flat. Uh, because we're putting the same highlight against his highlight. You want to keep behind the highlights shadow. So uh, that's like the main thing to remember here. Work in layers. Highlight, shadow, highlight, shadow. I mean, start, start with shadow. Shadow, highlight, shadow, highlight, etc. Um, so yeah, that's the basics of creating more depth with lighting. Are here any questions about this? I've got a slide for that as well. Yeah, we got a question. Um, interesting question. Um, well, you could do that. It's actually used uh, in, in photography as well a lot. There's this thing um, sh shooting against the shadow side. Um, yeah, you could do that actually. Um, well, it's, it's kind of considered. F yeah, how do you say that? Um, it's kind of con con considered flat if you would lit your subjects from the front and kind of blow that out. Uh, it's kind of considered flat. Um, but again, there, there are always like, like, you can always experiment and, and, and so there's not really like, this is wrong or right. Uh, there are always exceptions. That was a word that I was, was looking for. Um, but it's just like generally, if you would like, if we, if we start from a blank page, let's put it that way. Always, everything is shadow. So that's why we're, we're, we're separating the two shadows by uh, putting light in between and breaking those two shadows apart. Um, so that's kind of the idea behind it. Um, yeah. It would just consider to be more depthy. That kind of answers your question. I'm also struggling a lot with English words here, so I'm sorry for that. <laughs> Um, but if you just put the light more, uh, less towards the background and more uh, on the side, 
the lighting on the back here? Yeah, definitely. Oh, you mean towards him, like that? More like it, yeah. Something like that. That would that could work as well. Um, I would say keep your let, let's let's put it like this, perhaps for a moment. So that could kind of work as well. Um, what we're kind of seeing now is we got two. Okay, we we are creating a backlight on him. See, so this this would kind of work. Two. We're kind of getting a little spill light. We're adding like an extra highlight layer here <laughs> on his uh, right side. So that's why we're creating again layers. So that would be good. If we kind of block this like completely and have like a dark place there as well. So like that, maybe. It's starting to look a little bit more flat again because we are kind of uh, bringing his right sides also in that shadow part. So it's kind of like, like one object now as if we would put like a shadow in between, uh, uh, a highlight in between, then uh, he would be... Yeah, true, true. That's again that, uh, I mean, this is not, this is, that's the principle of a, of a three-point lighting. So where you would put like a soft lighting up front and then like a backlighting, uh, a light in the back that would shine and create that rim light indeed. That's the same principle. Um, it would create a highlight around the subject uh, against a shadow side in the back and have that, that layers. And, it would, and indeed, that would create more depth. And that's also something that I want to um, cover in the next uh, setup that I want to do. Um, because this is, like a, this is like the starting point of creating more depth. But you can indeed add things like a rim light that we're kind of creating now with this, with some spill lighting here. So, um, this could work, but there's another, another, another thing that we could do. And that comes in my next slide here. If we're taking a look at the color wheel, I'm going to switch this back. All right. So depth can be created in lots of ways. I mean, we can um, experiment with soft lights, um, hard light, lights, like with, with, that, with that rim light. Uh, but also in colors. And this is something that I, I really love to play with. Um, this right here is a color wheel, um, and it's not laid out just... I mean, these, these colors are in a certain range. I mean, they are... I'm looking for the English word again. In a certain um, order, that was the word <laughs> that I was looking for. Um, if we look here, and this is like a very, again, a very uh, basic principle, and which is called uh, color contrast. If we look here at the bottom of that... Um, or the bottom left of that uh, color wheel, we'd see the color blue or teal. On the other side, which is the contrast color or the negative color of that color, and that is uh, orange. So these two colors are in contrast with each other. And that's just like highlight and shadow, which are two also in contrast of each other. We can also play with these colors. And you've probably heard about it before, like the teal and orange look, uh, which a lot of people create with color grading uh, to create more contrast, more depth. And that's exactly what they're doing here. Um, sorry, another question? Yeah, true, true. It's used in a lot of uh, music videos, as well as um, these blog uh, blockbuster Hollywood videos. I'm going to screenshot of that as well. Uh, it is from the uh, Transformers. And you can see it here as well again. We have on the right side the, the highlight sides. We've got on this uh, right side of his face, we've got the shadow side. And if we're looking in the back, we also see the highlight on the left side uh, of his shadow side and the shadow side on his left sides. I'm saying a lot of sides today, isn't it? <laughs> um, so that's same palette that's coming back, but what have they done? They've also added that teal and orange look. These two colors that are on the opposite of each other. Now these two are natural colors, by the way, because we also saw in the color wheel green and magenta, and these are considered to be more artificial colors. Um, Orange and blue are natural colors. It's also something that we can set in our camera, the white balance. Um, are we shooting daylight? Are we shooting indoor with tungsten lighting? You know, those are considered the natural lights. Um, so let's do that quickly here because, I oh know, first, um, what fits where? I'm sorry. Um, the orange colors, what do we think of? If we think about orange colors. Skin 
Skin tones, yeah, exactly. Other things? Sunny day. Sunny day. Fire. Fire. Summer, yeah. So we kind of feel good with orange colors. It's natural, it's warm, it feels good. If we think about shadows, what do we think about then? Cold. Cold. Something else? Dark, Dark. yeah. Not a, lot of Not a lot of colors, yeah. Light, uh, night, sorry, uh, moon. Uh, indeed. Mystery, so maybe? mystery, yeah, exactly, mystery. So it's again also there with the feeling that w that we have with that color. It's the opposite. So if we lit an actor, um, we could use that to kind of put him in, into the good place or where everything is safe by just quickly changing the colors. So let's do that. Let's put like a filter in front of that. And this, is, by the way, something I really love just to work with filters, um, gels, simple gels. And I know that we have these bicolors, but uh, I still love to work with these because you s do have like more output, by the way, if you choose to go for a day daylight uh, light uh, because they have like the full size of, L L of LEDs as with um, if you would go for a bicolor, then the half of that LED light would be, um, yeah, I'm going to give that to you, uh, would be uh, tungsten LED lights. So. Um, if you want to have more power, go for the daylight lights. That's just uh, the idea behind it. And work with gels uh, for that occasion. Of course, a bicolor works a lot faster, so that's something that you have to look for. I'm going to switch back to the, to the camera here. We're getting there. So at this point, maybe that bicolor would be a little bit faster. <laughs> and I'm going to turn on the brightness a little bit, perhaps. Because with that filter, you're, of course, taking away that. All right. So there we go. This is like very simple. Um, we have warm uh, colors in the front. And in the back, we now have more daylight. But we can add like a blue filter as well in front of that. I have that with me. This goes a little bit faster. And people call these like C-47s or a gun uh, or bullets, was it? Or bullets. I don't know why, uh, but so let's do that. This, li this is a half CTB, I think. Yeah. That's the same palette here that we were, that we were seeing in that screenshot of the Transformers. There we go. So just, just by playing with these uh, colors now by putting the warmth in the front and the uh, cold in the back and the shadows into the mystery, we're kind of popping that subject out again. It's coming more to the front just by adding two color filters to the light. Uh, again, a very a simple principle which you can use to um, create more depth and bring your subject forward uh, by playing with this. Um, now, you don't always need um, a lot of lighting with this. What we also often do is, uh, in a daylight environment, work with tungsten lighting. And then we would change our white balance in the camera on that tungsten lighting, and then the background will be blue. But we will have the subjects with more natural skin tones, and that way, very simply, just have that subject just pop out way, way more. Uh, I also have some screenshots of, screenshots of that, because I can't show it to you with daylight here. Um, here also, by the way, for example, that screenshot comes next. Um, it wants to come. Yeah, so right here, what I'm actually doing is that same principle, but this time without lighting. So I'm just using a reflector here with the golden sides. So it's reflecting that sun onto Janik, and here's the result. Janik is warm, his skin tones are warm, and the background is a blue sky. So again, we're creating that teal and orange look. Uh, by simply doing that. And Janik is popping out way more. A simple technique if your uh, day is very, very bright, of course. Um, here we had uh, Kim, and th this was in that um, example of this big hall was lit by daylight. We had the gate open. So what I did was just put a tungsten lighting on Kim right here in the front, which makes her pop a little bit more out. Um, we had to work quick, so that was a quick way to do that instead of closing that gate and putting up lots of light um, to bring her more forward. 
And uh, there's one more thing that I want to show you guys, because what, what we're doing now constantly is putting the actor into a warm, good feeling. So what I'm going to do next here is kind of the opposite. So uh, we're going to put Thomas here behind this little desk. There you go. And just let you shut off these lights. Oh, yeah. There you go. This is, by the way, an IKEA light, which I've added an extra CTO filter in front of it, so I really have like um, warm lighting coming off from this. Uh, so as you can see, you don't always need expensive lighting um, or, or lights kits or, or whatever. You can just use ho household tools sometimes to create very nice light setups. So let's connect this here to the laptop, and that should give it power, hopefully. If the laptop wants to turn on. Was OK, there we go. We've got power. And now let's take a very small, because I don't think yeah, the battery is out. <laughs> OK. Um, is there an extra laptop, perhaps? To have let's, let's do it like that. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so let's assume that it's plugged into the laptop and that the laptop is also on. Yeah. All right, look at that. Uh, so Thomas is sitting behind the laptop in this case. There we go. And he's kind of he's kind of hacking into the White House. He's trying to get some uh, sensitive stuff from there. So he's kind of the bad person. He's kind of the, mis the mysterious person. So I'm going to use this lighting here to just let that shine on the table. And uh, if the laptop would be on, we could use that blue lighting from that laptop to lit him. Now we don't have, but we do have like these small, or, or a phone, we can use that as well. Or like one of the, that might be more suitable. Can you, can, you can use that. Okay. Oh yeah, there we go. There we go. So it's like a small aperture light, the uh, Amaran, by the way, which is very nice for such setups. So Thomas here, he's hacking, and this could be the laptop screen. We can also add like an extra blue filter in front of that. But if we, would yeah, yeah, you can do that. Yeah, we don't have a share, but there we go. So this here is a setup. You can see it now. Yeah, there we go. We get a share and everything. So he's. he's So if we were looking at this setup right here, we're kind of doing the opposite. He's a mysterious person, so we're also giving with the light that, character, the, the, that characteristic to the actor by putting him into the blue lighting. And um, our eyes are kind of drawn to the warm light, so it, at first you would look at this lighting over here, and uh, it would be great if we can dim that. We can't do that with this IKEA light, but uh, perhaps just put out some more output there. doesn't matter. Anyways, our eyes start to look at this area right here and then slowly go to the actor because there is where the movement is going on. And this is kind of how we can play with the eyes of the viewer as well to um, guide the viewer to the mystery, make him uh, look into the dark, into the blue sides of, uh, of the lighting. Um, this is, by the way, a, um, a tip that I got from Matthew Workman. He also works. He also has a channel called Cinematography Database. I do have to mention that he's a great guy, an awesome guy. Um, so I'm also learning a lot from him as well. So um, yeah, this that's a little bit about using colors and contra colors. Um, are there questions about this? Yeah. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Um, so the question was on which, um, how do you set your white balance now on a camera? Because we are working with two different lightings indeed. Well, I would always go for the, um, for the where you want to place the actor in. If your actor is into uh, the warm spot, well, don't make it too warm, but it's always nice to have that a little bit more, like don't put your uh, white balance on, on tungsten, but like a tiny bit warmer 
Uh, that is always nice. And you kind of have to see at how many CTB filters that, that you're using. If it's like really blue, then you might want to increase that a little bit more. Uh, like put a little bit warmer in your camera, but definitely make sure to focus on the subject. Uh, it's always um, the, the priority is always to have good skin tones. That is very important. Um, it can always be like a little bit more warmer. Definitely, if you're going to make it colder, then do that with a certain reason. Like this could be a reason here. We're going to make him blue. Like his skin tones can be a little bit more pale. Uh, we can definitely do that. Um, so. Um, Yeah, we want to keep that blue. If we're going to make that white through the white balance, then it wouldn't be blue anymore. So and the then camera is set to two I have no idea what it's set to, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah, that's indeed, yeah, because at this point, Thomas, is your skin tones, I mean, he's starting to look dead here a little bit. So, uh, yeah. See, if we would also increase that um, uh, white balance, make it warmer or, or too warm, um, then those two colors are nearly the same now. You see, we have like a very orange color here on the right side, or left side, and then Thomas here is like normal his skin tones. So we're kind of more into the orange spectrum as we want to make sure that we have that we're reaching the two spectrums, like orange, warm, and blue, like those two. Um, so this would be here. We don't see that color contrast too much because we are just on one side of that circle that we saw in the beginning. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> All right. That, yeah, there it's back. Yeah, this, so this could, this could work. Um, Thomas's skin tone sk still look great. We're good. Not great, but good. Uh, and he's a little bit more into that. So yeah, his battery is also down. But I think that we get the idea <laughs> of how that works. Are there maybe questions from the live stream? Janik. Okay, Janik is doing a great job. He's answering all the questions there. Other questions, perhaps, right, about this. Five and nine. People ask questions, by the way. So yeah. <laughs> so four more left. If you have a question for Jordy, just ask it. Uh, we're also going to do that for the live stream too. So for people watching the live stream, I'm actually going to ship you a light. Okay. Yeah. All sure. right. So anyone from the live stream, if you have a question, pop them right now, and you can actually win one of these uh, small LED lights to uh, recreate this scene, which was inspired by Matthew. I do have to say that. But I heard that Matthew heard that from Shane Hurlbut. I know that Shane for sure has so this exact light. Shane has yeah. the same <laughs> studio. Okay. And you're doing the Shane Hurlburt voice of okay. like, Kilo lights, man. <laughs> doing Hollywood lighting. Yeah. <laughs> so who knows where the ID come from? Question. Hi, yeah. I was wondering, uh, would you recommend uh, using fractal lights in your scene, like diabetic lights? Would you recommend using that as a light source for your, for your character? Or would you also recommend using uh, off cam camera light source? Yeah, that's actually a super good question. I have that on my paper, but now that you're asking this, yeah, so he's asking, would you put lights vis visible in the shot, like practical lighting? I have that on here, but I just totally forgot to show that. So that's a very good question. Yeah, <laughs> uh, We can perhaps quickly do that. I'll just hold one of these small lights, perhaps. Um, or let's see, let's just quickly make something here. So uh, make sure that, that you look at the right side of the camera. So now we have, no, the other side, the left side, sorry. <laughs> the left side of the camera. So we have the shadow side now on this side of his face. If we add like a practical lighting somewhere right here, we're again creating that highlight. So we have um, shadow highlights uh, in the back. So that works definitely. And I also use that a lot, actually, uh, practical lighting. But it does have to make sense. Um, if you would put, it's the same principle as, as putting your light against the wall, or you just would make it visible. You can also just use it as a rim light as well here on the back. Uh, but it has to make sense. Uh, don't just put up any light source in the back if it doesn't add something to the story. Uh, if you're shooting an interview about someone 
uh, a very personal story and that person is sitting in his living room, you could use the decorative lights in the backgrounds uh, of that that fits within the living room. Uh, if Thomas here is a film director, I mean, we could put like this old uh, RE lamp here in the back. Uh, that would be very, very nice. Uh, I also like, by the way, these IKEA bulbs that, that you have. I actually have them uh, in my studio. These large bulbs where you can kind of see the uh, glowing thread in there, uh, which is also used very often as a practical lighting. They don't illuminate that much, so they're not helping to illuminate the scene or giving a backlighting or rim light or, or whatever. Their sole purpose is to have a practical or visible lighting in the back, so I love to work with those as well. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm trying to figure out the question. Well, if you, uh, you can also ask it in Dutch, perhaps, and I'll try and test it. Yeah, okay, that, that's a good question. Yeah, so if there would, power. yeah, so if the uh, environment already has a certain color palette, how do you light and set your white balance accordingly so that it doesn't look or start to look unnatural? Um, well, your color palette in your scene, so if you would be in, in a forest that is like super green or, or, or you would have like a certain background, like we also had uh, with that sky, which is a blue sky, um, you indeed, you kind of, if you want, if you want to make sure that it, it doesn't look unnatural, you indeed have to adjust there a little bit. So you kind of have to look at, at which kind of saturation are we getting here? And this maybe goes a little bit more technical, but you could look at your vector scope on your monitor, like like how much saturation are we getting uh, in the backgrounds, and kind of adjust your colors to that. Uh, like like before, um, if we'd set a white balance as well, you're kind of wrong. We would get like the two same colors. So that's something that you want to uh, pay attention to in, to in, a, in, in, an, in an environment uh, that, for example, has very blue rocks. Well, perhaps don't put like very high, uh, high warm, and a, like a double CTO filter in front of that or something like that. That, 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 that. It's too warm because then your your background will be like too blue, too saturated. So, so you might just want to go for a, a daylight uh, light on that person if you have like very blue rocks in the background and set your white balance accordingly so that the uh, the person looks more warm in his uh, in his face um, skin tones but so that the rocks in the background start to get a little less blue perhaps if you uh, are afraid to get too much too much saturation uh, in that contrast yeah no question That's a very good question there. So how can you achieve the same look with the uh, teal and orange or the blue and orange if you don't have much time to set up lights and everything? Just just use like a window or something. Uh, if that's like the on, on, only available lights, um, use a window, <laughs> like I was saying. And yeah. Okay. Um, well, mostly we'd put like a lighting outside, like a blue light to create that moonlight, because it's usually not visible. Um, um, you can hope for a, a bright moonlight, uh, kind of aim for that, perhaps. <laughs> um, that could be something. Or, um, you know, what I also sometimes just say, like, use a flashlight uh, if you have that laying around. Uh, use something that that's uh, if it's in the back, it's not so it's such a big problem that it's a bad lighting. As long as you're not putting that on the skin tones, then the CRI doesn't always, it's not always that big of a problem. Yeah, yeah. You can just use like a tungsten lighting inside. So you can use the existing lighting that is there. Make sure to uh, set your subject, like if this is a lighting in that living room, uh, make sure that your subject is staying, uh, sitting a little bit uh, next to that so that you're 
getting light from a site and do, uh, put up the same principle here, like make sure that the subject is also looking to that side of the camera then, and then have um, in the back sides and uh, out, outside, for example, behind uh, in, the, in a window or something, just put up a flashlight, uh, have someone come with you to hold that, or or put up a light stand if you have that, or perhaps just just with a broom or something and with some tape, just just build something that you have some lighting over there that is shining into the curtains, perhaps uh, from the back. And uh, yeah, that could be a good solution. We also use that a lot, actually. Like I was saying with the um, uh, teal and orange look, that we just use daylight and then look for something tungsten uh, to kind of create that teal and orange look. So if we have, if we are inside and there's tungsten and it's daylight, we can kind of use that to create that teal and orange look. Um, so yeah, we're okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I, I, that's that's a good question, actually. So, if you would create these different layers, like we were talking before, and you're going to do that with all different kind of, I mean, with with, the, with these two colors, like having um, uh, orange, then sh uh, blue, orange, blue, orange, blue, then indeed you're getting a uh, a weird color palette. Um, that's going to look pretty weird. Um, it's 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 better indeed to keep what you want to focus on. But there's always like one element that you want to focus on to bring that element in the, um, in the warm spectrum and put that up front, for example. Uh, but you can also have like, something in the shadow as well, and then the front have that out of focus, perhaps. Uh, so you can kind of play like, where is your focus point? Anyways, in the back, you can, for example, play with different shades of blue. That is something that you can play with. Um, if you do want to do that, like, you can have like, a very um, uh, hard, saturated blue uh, that is coming um, through a door opening because there's something mystery in there, but you also have a window with a moonlight, which is a little less blue, uh, but you're still keeping that blue in the background, just different shades um, of that blue, like less sh less saturated. Um, yeah, that could be something. Or like different tints as well. You can also like a bit more teal uh, with, with one uh, light in the back, the other one more blue. But uh, indeed, don't s start switching back and forward because that indeed would make the audience crazy <laughs> to look. Yeah. Um, I noticed in one of the, the shots you examples you, you gave that uh, you had a very blown out background. Yeah. And you chose to um, um, highlight the, uh, the the subject with uh, a teal uh, tungsten. Yeah. Uh, Was that to uh, make the attention go away from the uh, overblown background? Yeah, yeah, that's indeed. Yeah, well, we, that was actually a shot that we did very quickly uh, uh, because at YouTube we're doing these uh, episodes twice a week, so we, <laughs> we really have to work fast to get our episodes out. And sometimes we have to look uh, quickly for a solution that works. And uh, at that point, the best solution was just to put up the gate, and indeed it was just overexposed, and we kept it that way. And uh, the attention will indeed go to that overexposure part, to the bright part. And by just doing that, by um, bringing that warm light, indeed that subject comes out more to the front, even though it's darker than its background. So that's an, that could be a solution, indeed. I'm not saying it's the best solution, but it's a quick solution that, that works. Yeah. yeah, another question in the back. That's a good question as well. Uh, so which uh, lighting color would you use in a teal and orange setup as the backlight, so to create that rim lighting? Uh, then it would also go for that blue color. And the reason why is because the source of that lighting sits in the back, and it's shining from the back on that subject. And everything that is in the back is a uh, little exaggerated, but is mysterious, is, is, uh, is dark, is, is uh, not good, if <laughs> you say it like that. Um, Actually not, because we are bringing the uh, we're creating a rim light behind it. The skin tones up front, 
um, will always be that uh, orange color, um, which which makes that makes which makes the skin tones natural. You can even play a little bit with the shadow side. So here with Thomas on this side, we can even add some blue in here. We can do it right now. Yeah. Oh yeah, we can do it right now. Yeah. yeah. So let's see what we're getting here. Like that. So we're even getting some a little bit. Oh, like that, yeah. There you go, yeah. And this works, and, and the reason why is that a little bit overexposed, but uh, we're getting the idea here. Um, it's the shadow side of Thomas. And shadow, we are talking about that before, shadow is blue, is dark, is... So that fits within his shadow side of the face, as long as his highlight side, the warm, the, the good feeling, the, uh, the summer, is that tungsten lighting. So um, that's kind of the idea behind. Yeah. Do you have uh, like different approaches in case that the you know that the person is going to move in the scene? All right. So it, are there different approaches if your subject will move in the scene? Uh, well, then you kind of just have to. Um, that's also something that Matt once told me. Um, he always lights where he or he loves to light white. Uh, so that his actors can r run around in the scene freely without having to pay attention to, uh, do I have to stand here or do I have to stand there? Uh, so that there are no limitations towards the actors. And that's, yeah, you just have to light white. You need to have space. Uh, like, we could make this softbox bigger. Uh, that's just what it comes down to. Um, so that's definitely, like, the uh, better solution, but we don't always have that. Um, I'm coming from the low-budget productions, and usually we don't have much space, and we have to set up the an, in, an interview in the CEO's office where there's uh, not much space, and, and uh, so we just have to do like one lighting here. So yeah, he has to sit there. Uh, so it's not always practical, but in the ideal scenario, yes, you would light bigger that your actor could run around freely and have that same lighting overall. Um, yeah. Usually lights aren't bright enough. To light white. Yeah. Fix that. <laughs> fix that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Another question there. Talking about blue and orange color, um, there are no another contrasty colors. They are not used so often, or why is the reason because they only use two colors? Yeah. Okay. Good question. So um, the teal and orange. Why are always these two colors used and not the other colors of the spectrum? Uh, so like I said before, the teal and the orange is considered to be natural. Uh, these are natural colors. So that is why they are used very often. The other two, green and magenta, they're more artificial colors. And we also use that. I can actually show that presentation here again. Uh, we had a shot of that where I was showing Janik. So right here, when it's coming up, there we go. Here we are kind of doing that opposite here. We're working with green and magenta. Uh, now what I did do was add a tungsten light on his face here to get a little more natural skin tones. Because if it would only use green and magenta, Janik wouldn't have natural uh, skin tones. So that's why I'm kind of breaking that. Uh, but we are doing that. I mean, we could use here in the back, we're using magenta, and we're using uh, green here in the front. Um, but that is more artificial. Uh, so that would work for a an, an science fiction film about aliens or, or whatever. Uh, there, green is used a lot. Um, so uh, you can definitely use that, but uh, most often the CEO of a certain company wouldn't be happy if we would set up some, something like this for an, an interview. So, uh <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, Janik has a question the from the live stream. Franco Rizzo. Franco Rizzo. Hello there. Characteristic. Yeah. Okay. Good question. So, uh, tungsten. I mean, the the tungsten bulbs, uh, like these, the the old-fashioned lights. Is that slowly getting out? Are we more going towards LED? Is there a certain look towards these bulbs that still that is still there? Um, yes, bulbs are the best. And <laughs> 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 they were too 
there. <laughs> no, I think uh, we actually still use a lot of uh, tungsten lighting. We have the RE series, like the 650, the 1K, etc. We also have two Red Hats uh, open face L uh, lights uh, with, with these bulbs inside. Um, first of all, working with them is not fun. They get uh, very hot, those lights. Um, they also break very quickly. If you just move a light when it's on, there's a big chance that you're breaking the, um, the thread inside that, that, that bulb. Uh, they're also very expensive, I found out. Uh, their lifespan is not large. So when it comes down to um, the practical side, LED is everything. Um, I mean, it doesn't get hot. It, it's, it has a super long lifespan. Uh, you can change the colors with dials. I mean, soon uh, R RGB lighting will, will be there too. Uh, there are al al already companies experimenting with that. So we can set all the colors with just a dial or, or with an app on our phone. So that is super practical with LEDs. Uh, the only problem with LEDs these days is, of course, the color reproduction. And there are still many brands out there that sell green lights. Um, in, the beginning of our, in, a, of, in the beginning of our channel, uh, we were actually sent uh, two LED lights from a company somewhere that knocked off some L lights elsewhere. And we were very happy at that time, in the beginning of our channel, that we were getting items for free. Uh, but now they're actually hanging in my garage uh, because I can't use them to light people with it. <laughs> so we're nothing with those lights eventually. Um, so that is very important that you look for LED lighting that creates that good color reproduction. That is still still a challenge, I think, today. Um, uh, a lot of companies like Aperture manage to get a good color reproduction, but I do still think there is a, 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 a way to improve uh, in there. Um, so I still like tungsten lighting a lot. It's a very warm, it's a natural color. We also made a video about that once, by the way. If you're looking for a light and you only have five bucks, you can actually get a very good light for five bucks, which is a construction light out of, out of the Home Depot. A tungsten construction light, because tungsten lighting is just very natural always. You can't really go wrong with that. Um, the yeah. CRI of a tungsten light, uh, what is that, 100? 100, perhaps. Uh. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so the CRI rating of the tungsten lighting is 100. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just a very high CRI rating, yeah. And that is just, and we're kind of trying to uh, recreate that with LED, and that is a challenge. Um, so with LED, it's not so easy to get that good color. You need to spend a little bit more than 100 bucks for an LED panel. Uh, Going to continue here. Yeah. I'm going to let Ted answer that question. <laughs> so uh, well, that would be a group answer, but uh, let's just say we're very hopeful for the future. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the question was, can we re re replace the HMIs for the, uh, um, the, the, the daylights, uh, sunlight, uh, with LED? Um, one. I mean, with the 300D, you know, something that's equivalent to a 2K, especially when you Fresnel it in and slot it in, I mean, that is something that will, you can really compete with the sun. We've tested that already, and the, the LA sun is always out. There's no clouds out there. Uh, we have competed with the sun several times. It'll absolutely fail, and you can shape the actual key of the sun a little bit, too. It's also mm -hmm. already addressed with the CRIDs with the... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm wondering if maybe we need to look in the future, but who knows? Yeah. The future is bright. That's, that's, all <laughs> that's, a, lot of yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. Coming, uh, yeah. Right. right. So for the live stream, uh, are there LED lights that can be used as a sun lighting? Uh, the Trainer D. That's the answer. Uh, some, it's it's well, a it's coming out. It's coming out. It's coming. Out. It's coming out real soon. So uh, yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Any more questions? Yeah. Question in the back. <laughs> uh, get a round of applause for Thomas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Thomas. Let's put him back on the screen. Right 
We're getting there. Yeah, we're getting there. Yeah, it's sleeping. Yeah, it's getting, getting there. Uh, the, the, the back light yeah. is a uh, is, uh, improved expansion from the back. Yeah. Right? But you could also use uh, a function from the back. Yeah, right? definitely can. A blue, a blue light in the background. Yeah. For the background. That makes him cozy and warm. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. You're really putting then, then, then you're kind of putting him more to the front, perhaps, because you're really putting then him in the tung in the tungsten spectrum. Like nothing of the blue was touching him, so he's kind of coming loose. Yeah, indeed. And uh, the, the the Finnish filmmaker Aki Kallisma, for example, yeah, he always uses the same light color, just tungsten or daylight, nothing else. Yeah. He, he doesn't he doesn't do blue and orange in his shots. Okay. Yeah, true. That's nice, yeah. So the LEDs that we make have a lifespan of 10,000 hours. Uh, the one thing to keep in mind, though, is that even though LEDs do not generate a lot of heat, they're very, very heat sensitive. So you got to keep them cool when you're operating. So one of the biggest things is make sure that you're not like leaving them in the sun baking and making sure that the fans are working and that everything is being maintained and kept right. Uh, if they do get hot, you will start to see the color shift a little bit, and that's a problem. So make sure you keep those LEDs cool. But again, mm -hmm. they will stay cool, and again, if they're properly made and they have fans. Mm -hmm. Uh, for the live stream, perhaps uh, the question was like uh, my colors of the of the of an LED light are shifting, and uh, to put it up quickly over time, uh, how is that? Is live stem span closing? And a great answer here from Ted is you have to look at the uh, cooling of the LED lights. If your LEDs get too hot, they get that color shift. Uh, so it's important to look at that. At the fans are working, that there's a lot of that there's enough way that the heat can go away. So uh, look at that when buying LED lights. That's an uh, important thing as well. We got a question again from the live stream. This is our last question. <laughs> last question. <laughs> right, so a good question, perhaps. A, what's more important, good filming or good lighting? Um, Can we raise heads? So yeah, okay. <laughs> Who thinks uh, good camera work is, is more important? <laughs> Two and who thinks uh, three? Oh, we got a couple. Who thinks lighting is more important? <laughs> okay, so uh, lighting is more important. <laughs> no, I, I think so too. Um, in a way, um, um, you often lose a lot of time to create something, cer a certain movement, like setting up a crane and everything uh, to create a certain movement with your camera. You're putting all of your time and effort into that, but you're, forget about you're forgetting about the lighting or you don't have time to put up lights. Well, um, if Thomas here would be completely in a shadow and he's sitting behind a window, which is completely blown out, I mean, that just looks bad. No matter how great your camera movement looks, then it's better to just say, let's put your, the camera on a simple tripod. Let's put some time here to put up lights uh, in, the, in the room, put some soft lighting so that we can uh, work against that window in the back, perhaps uh, seal that window, I don't know what, but do something about the lighting. That is what I believe important too. Now you can make a little compromise sometimes, like let's put up a simple lighting so that we also have some time to work on a slider or something like that. So it's kind of a balance that you, you have to look. But uh, lighting should be like, Let's first say that lighting, that you can't make a, a big mistake with lighting up front. Um, yeah. If you can fix it like a little bit, then like, yeah, yeah you know what well I mean. <laughs> lighting and bad camera work will always look better than yeah. great camera work and terrible lighting. Yeah, indeed. So indeed so. Okay. All right, let's get a big round for Jordy. Thank, Thank you. Andres is amazing. Uh, if you guys don't follow his channel already, he's got a fantastic YouTube channel online. 
Um, these guys make movies regularly on the go. He's an award-winning feature film director. Uh, so we're gonna be doing a Q&A with real behind-the-scenes footage of how he lived some of the scenes and how he went through them. Grab a beer, we're gonna do that in 10 minutes. So we'll set up for that. Uh, but stick around. Thanks so much, guys. <laughs> Hey, you're the best. Yeah. Can I just sit? Yeah, you did it. Yeah, come over here. Let's get some booth set up. Let's get a mic set up. Yeah. This thing. See which one's mine and which one's. They all look the same, you know? <laughs>
six minutes and 20 seconds. Okay, but I'm from lunch break. Yes, we can. Okay, so we can move it over there. Probably yeah. okay. had in, in the past. Yeah. We're like, okay, we can do something. Okay, what you get? You get a little wild. I'll just step over. Yeah. 